Okay, let me let me intro to uh, to all my viewers. Uh, the homeowner of this uh, unit itself, uh, the master yes. Wei Jie and the wife Charlene. Okay, so uh, I know you have used some home gadget for your ho uh, whole home. Okay, so maybe you want to go through a little bit of the things that you have used and, and their function. Okay, so maybe we can start with the main door first. So we have our digital door wheel here. So basically okay. this is like a... We can pair this to our phone. Alright. So we can see who is outside. We can even record uh, if there's like movement outside. Okay, so it's like a motion, motion sensor? Motion sensor, yeah. Okay. okay. So we can use our phone and the app to like monitor yeah. whoever's outside. We can open the door for them also. Okay. Yeah. So when someone is standing outside the door, straight away your phone will will uh, alert, alert you, yeah, alert, alert you that there's some maybe a delivery or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you are inside the house, then you just use this screen to look through. All right. This is a very large uh, screen. How how big is this size? Four inches. Four inches. Okay. <laughs> so it's about four inches, lah. Yeah. It's very clear. All right. You can see the pixel and everything. I think you can see the face quite clearly as well. Okay, uh, what about your this uh, door uh, lock system? Uh, how, how are you going to unlock this when, you, when so you're going to work? So, both our door lock and the, the main door outside is by Philips. And then it's also... Okay, uh, okay so you just touch, yeah, just yeah, touch sensor and then you just open up the uh, door. Okay, great. So the, the gate uh, is the same function, I guess so? Yeah, so... Okay. Right, so this is also Philip. It's also by Philip. So okay. the good thing about this is that you can use your thumbprint or use the phone to open the key, open okay. the door directly. Can you uh, demonstrate? I think you go home. Okay. Oh, yeah, I demo this one. Okay. Yeah, so if you use your thumbprint, right, you just put your thumb over here. Ah, uh, okay. And then the door will unlock. So the door, okay. Yeah, there's also okay. like a, a key card they can tap also. Right. Or use your phone. Uh. It's all remotely accessible. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on to the other part of the house. Okay, so we take a look at the kitchen now. What are the uh, appliances that, that they have used? Um, Charlie, maybe you can uh, show the viewers what kind of uh, hob, oven and the hood that you have used. Yeah, so for our microwave oven, we have this one from Ariston. So this one is very good because it's multifunctional. So it can uh, microwave, it can steam, it can grill. And you can uh, add fry also. Oh, okay. So it's not just the conventional oven, so it has got multi function. Yeah, a lot okay. of many users. So, roughly, how much is it that you you bought from? About 1.8k. 1.8k, okay. Yeah. So, uh, averagely, an oven costs about maybe the analog one, maybe about four to five hundred dollars. Mm. So, this is all digital, multi function. So yeah, that, that explains the price. Yeah, I mean, same space also because like, definitely, yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, all in one. yeah so it's like all in one. So you just need the bottom slot, slot this in. Mm. You you clear the tabletop space, right? You don't yeah. need the oven, the microwave oven or other oven on the tabletop. Okay. Yeah. What about this uh, induction hob? Okay, so our induction hob is from Whirlpool, and it has like four different zones. So okay. you can choose to either cook at like this, this small one, uh, this middle one, or you can use this big one as a whole. Uh. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you need a special kind of uh, pot or pan material in order to have the induction working? Yeah, so we need to use pots and pans that are compatible with like induction cooker. Uh. If okay. not, it won't work. So it's like it has to be a flat uh, surface. Yes, flat, bottom, yeah. flat bottom, flat bottom of the, the hob. Okay, so when when you turn on this induction hob, if you were to touch at the side, will it be warm or will it be like you know going to burn your hand or things like that? So the sides of the where the logo is right, it's not hot. But if you touch like the actual thing, it's it will be a bit hot lah. Okay, so but hand. it doesn't burn your hand. It won't really it won't work. Okay, really okay. So probably I, because what I know is for induction hot, once you remove the pan of the pot, right, the heat will actually die down itself, mm. right? Auto automatically die down itself. So, so after you touch, yes, it's a little bit warm, but it doesn't uh, uh, burn your hand. Yeah, you just, don't, you just be careful not to put your whole hand here and leave it there. No? Right. Then it should be fine. Okay. Uh, what about this uh, slim uh, Ariston hood? So this hood is also from Ariston, and we got the one without the shimmy because it's a bit bulky, right. yeah. So it's very right. flat and okay. Thin. So from the <laughs> top 
Okay, it's all for storage lah. Yeah, okay, so good. it's very slim. Okay, it's very slim. There's no chimney inside built in. Okay, so on top can use for storage. The van comes up from here. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, bit, a lot more like. Um, yeah. Space a lot more space saving definitely. Yeah. So you don't need that. Uh, that chimney that goes all the way up and then at the top, right? We need to do a ventilation uh, gap, right? Where the air flows out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so this is just a basic uh, hood, okay, yeah. uh, which is the smaller size, right? Normally, we'll use the 90 cm, so this is only 60 cm, so it matches very well with the uh, oven and the hob, right? And also, of course, it's more safe, uh, space saving, right? Because, you know, your induction hob is just two feet, two feet and then two feet, so you have a lot more tabletop space, yeah, yeah. okay? So what about your, this uh, dish rack? So yep. we wanted to kind of like flush the whole cabinetry in the kitchen uh. Okay So you can see that all the storage all the storage space is like flat Flat, yeah So this is actually a built-in uh, dish rack that right. we concealed uh, by bloom ah, yeah. okay. So to press it right, it will go up uh, automatically Right, okay, yeah. so how are you going to close it? So like some people are short here, so you can't touch it ah, So you can yeah. just press the button here ah, And it will come down okay. automatically uh. Okay, oh that's great um, <laughs> I, I almost I seldom almost use this kind of uh, uh, hinge but then uh, with here they opted to use this which I think is a very good idea okay uh, can you show me again I think it's very uh, nice to play with <laughs> touch uh, see. so just a little tap on the door right then the door will just uh, open up by itself and this is the button that you just have to press and move away and then it closes. Mm. Wow, okay, that's a, that's a very um, practical way of uh, closing the door. Yep. Right, instead of uh, you know the door being at an angle, and then if you open up too high, yeah. you, know, you can't reach, and then you gotta get a stool and yeah. you know, to close the door. Yeah, it's a lot more convenient. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we move to the next part of the house. Oh, that's their lovely cat. <laughs> okay, so, um, so is there any part of the house that you want to uh, show to the viewers? Yeah, so um, our, our living room, I requested Rima to have a feature wall. Uh, that's, to, that's me. Yes. <laughs> 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 to, to, to hide all the cables because we right. want to go for like, the minimalistic look. Like. Okay. So uh, to complement that, we got a LG uh, G165 inch OLED TV. Right. So uh, the good thing about the G1 is that it has a flush uh, mounting. Mm. So you will flush uh, perfectly to the uh, feature wall la. Right Then that way we can have all the cables uh, routed behind the feature wall itself Okay yeah. Okay. So on my part right, um, I actually did uh, this feature wall in a way that there's some thickness So the cable can actually just throw behind the feature wall down to the suspended uh, TV console okay. uh, How about that sound bar? That looks huge Right, yeah So. Uh, the soundbar we, we opted for a Samsung one, not a LG one. Okay. Uh, because this Samsung one uh, comes with uh, surround speakers right. uh, at the back of the sofas. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty decent uh, and the price also not too expensive. Okay, okay. The sound, so it doesn't, okay, there's a, there's a subwoofer yeah, that comes with the, the speaker. Okay. Um, Okay, let's uh, take a look at the switches that you have or maybe right. the lighting that you are using. So, for our switches, uh, they're all uh, Shinaida electric switches. Uh, okay. uh, so we, we got them because we kind of like the way it looks. Like. Right. And the single tech functionality where you uh, don't have a different okay. toggle states. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a slight tap. Yeah. Okay. And then you... Right. So you can see a little bit of this uh, light here. Okay, that is very functional, especially at night. Yep. Okay, when you want to turn on the switch, so all these uh, little indicator that you can just tap and turn on the light. Okay, what about this? Uh, this one looks uh, yeah. interesting. So this this is what they call the free locate. Um, it's actually a switch that you can bring around. Uh, it's not powered by any other uh, batteries. Right. Uh, so all you need to do is just in the app you can bind. Um, Different switcher, different buttons okay. to have a different uh, 
automations. Okay. So for instance, right now uh, we have our lights on and I've found, I found that this bottom left to okay. turn off all the lights in the house. Okay. Yeah. So this is off? Yeah. And on is? On uh, for now I don't use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what's this? Uh, a knife and a fork. Yeah. So <laughs> knife and a fork is uh when it's dinner time. Ah. Uh, we actually bound it to turn on all the uh din the dinner lights. Uh, okay. the dining room table lights. Okay. Sorry. So have yeah. you linked this up? I think so. Okay. Can you just uh? The light. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe I off the light. Ah. Okay. Yeah. I so maybe I can it. demo uh, me offing okay. all the lights. Okay, so one one button yeah. switches off the living and the dining light. Yep. Okay. If you want, you can control using your phone also. So here I set up uh, on my phone. I right. can just click this button, okay. and then you will turn on the dinner lights. The, okay. The dining room lights. Okay. Yeah. So that explains the fork and the knife. Yeah. So if you want, you can uh, manually op uh, switch on uh, individual switches also from the phone app. Okay. Yeah. Turn them off. Yeah. However, you want. Okay. okay. Right. So, can the light be dim or is just one uh, one consistent brightness? Yeah. So, if uh, you want your lights to dim, right? Uh, one thing is that you should get the. What is it called? The controller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, if you if you want your lights to dim, you all need to get a dimming controller. Okay, a separate con yeah, controller. Yeah, separate controller. To dim the lights. So okay. if I'm not wrong, most apps they allow you to control the amount of uh, light to output. Uh. So right. it's more on the hardware than the software itself. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what Weijian has used or what I had proposed the other day was uh, using this kind of uh, concealed track lights. Okay, and then all the fittings are. Uh, detachable, you can remove it and then you can shift any uh, location that you want. So I've, I've got a lot of uh, qu queries about this uh, this kind of uh, concealed lighting. So this is a very good example. Okay. Right, so this is one whole row of that um, LED uh, light. Right, so this whole thing can be removed and then you can actually shift the position. Right, It's all magnetic, right, including this as well. Okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six bulbs, right? You can just remove and then shift the position. Okay, so uh, Vijay, I also know that uh, you are using some uh, automated uh, curtain system. Yes. So, can you? Yeah, so for more? our curtains, uh, I requested uh, for everyone that I wanted motorized curtains. Right. Yeah, so um, using a remote, you can uh, close the curtains, you can stop it at any moment, you can open it. Uh, really up to you. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that is actually a moto somewhere, right? Yes. Or uh, the the moto is actually hidden inside the yeah. track. So it's it's hidden behind the curtains. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Can you see the moto there? Okay. That's the moto that is being hidden behind the curtain, so it's not obvious. But what you need to cater for is you need a wiring point to connect to the moto. All right. That's it. Okay, so see that the moto is hidden behind. Okay, so definitely, of course, you need to have a curtain helmet, right? Uh, you have a drop ceiling, you have a curtain helmet, so everything will be neater, right? So, uh, what about the speed? Can you control the speed, or can you set, uh, in, uh, like, you want to half open or fully open? The, for the speed, you can't really control. Okay, but you can control how far back you want the curtain to uh, go before they stop. Okay. Or how much uh, they really want to close all the way around. So it's it's up to you to set for that case. Right. Uh, if you want, you can also uh, have some automation and uh, buy their. Uh, I think it's their smart home kit. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, the one cost like three hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So cost is also one another issue when it comes to uh, automation, right? Especially for curtain. Okay, so for the fabric itself, right, you can see that it's just some day curtain, right, but it's, uh, it's like almost to black, dark grey. Okay, so if you are considering using a curtain at the living room without uh, spending too much, okay, you can just uh, opt for one layer of the day curtain. Okay, so with it, um, I've uh, noticed that you are still using back the same uh, Schneider switches. 
okay for your master bedroom as well i think uh basically the whole house you are using this uh schneider switches so what's the reason for using this kind of uh, switches yeah so uh, the nice thing about the schneider switches is that it's actually soft touch it yeah. doesn't have that loud clacking noise uh, from your typical analog switches so it doesn't really uh, disturb your partner to much long. right so when she's okay. like for example when charlene's sleeping and i need a bit like i can just turn it on and she probably wouldn't hear it at all so. right okay so if you can hear or listen to the the switch right when you turn on right just a, a slight tap okay so it's not the conventional plastic key sound you know that wakes up your partner at night okay so this is also one that turns on the LED strip at the top okay Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the master bathroom. Okay, so Charlene, mm -hmm. I noticed that you have this uh, two strip of this uh, LED light, okay, embedded onto the um, mirror itself. So what's the reason for you to do that? Yeah, so for me, when I do a makeup, I don't like to sit down for too long because the mirror is always very far away. So okay. what we did was to incorporate like uh, these LED strips in our vanity Cabinet. Okay. So let me turn this on. Ah, okay. Yeah. So if okay. I stand here, right, it's very bright, and I can see my makeup clearly. Ah. And I can get right near to the mirror, la, which is what I want also. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think this uh this one will actually be best if you just always want to have a quick makeup. Yeah. Okay. So you stand right. up and then you don't need to like you know. Uh, yeah. Then you sit down and then stay there so long. Yeah. And long and yeah. I want a quick one and I just come here and. Do a one, right, done. right, right. So it's not glaring at all. I mean, if you are looking at the mirror, it's is not. It? It's not too glaring. Like, I think okay. it's just nice because I want the light on my face, so it's like two lights mm, shining in yeah. the mirror. Yeah. So more balance, ah. Uh. The balance, left and yeah. the right be more balanced, ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, so right now we are at the common bathroom. As all of you know, for um, HDB flat, right, most of the pipes are concealed. And HDB actually supply you with all the a location for a storage heater. Okay, so normally we will actually just uh, install above the main door, right, on the beam itself. So if you can see here, the Ariston is actually a longish shape. Okay, this is suitable for HDB usage because of the height is not too high. So it doesn't drop down too much. Okay, uh, this part here. Right, just make sure that it clears the door, right, when you open and close. So we say, what's the reason for you using this kind of uh, heater? Yeah. So um, we, we used to have uh, traditional heaters uh, back at our parents' place. And every time when we come back, uh, we have to turn on the heater, wait for it to heat up. And it's, it's just that minor inconvenience that's a bit annoying. Right. So with this Ariston uh, Wi-Fi heater, uh, we can actually turn on the heater beforehand so when we're on the way back from work we can just turn it on come back and straight away shower so yeah. does that mean that it's run on a wi-fi system correct correct okay. so it's, it's currently connected to our wi-fi okay. uh, we leave the switch on all the time okay. uh, it will only turn on or consume electricity when we actually tell it to start heating up the water okay so you can control using a phone app is it correct so okay this is the phone app uh, we can control the temperature, how much we want and the nice thing is also they even tell you for 70 degrees for example you can heat up for like two persons worth of uh, hot water ah yeah. okay that's very smart yeah okay and um, they even have an additional feature where you can actually schedule when you want your heater to turn on so uh, every morning uh, when we know like roughly around 8 o'clock when we need to leave house we will get the heater turned on and uh, heated up uh. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, so you can you can choose to turn on for like fifteen minutes and then you will switch off by itself. Uh, they they will heat the water up to the specific temperature that you request. Yeah. Okay. So once it reaches the temperature, yeah, then you just cut it off. Okay. So and then because it's a storage heater, the water will still remain warm yeah. inside the heater for maybe a few hours yeah. before you use it. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay, so guys, uh, if you intend to or you have always questions about uh, Wi-Fi storage heater, okay, so I think Weijie has explained very well to you 
why you need to use this kind of uh, storage heater what's the reason for doing that okay so i think everyone wants a smart home system uh, but sometimes you are reluctant to use because you don't know the function okay so take note of that okay uh, thanks Vijay and uh, Charlene okay for showing <laughs> the viewers right what uh, gadgets you have used what home system you have used so I think um, the home viewers uh, might have uh, gotten a lot of information from both of you yeah yeah if you have any questions can and find each other on Instagram. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I will just uh, on the, on the yeah. Okay, so I will just uh, put the link below. Yeah. Okay, so if anything, you can always uh, get in touch with Charlene. Uh, what kind of uh, home system uh, yeah. or the supplier and, yeah. and the brands that uh, they have used for their home? Okay, so once again, thanks a lot, Charlene Thank and uh, Wechee. Bye bye. bye.